Hello Popper fans, welcome to round four. I'm Methonical, and hopefully we don't have any more replay issues. Let's just jump right into this one and take a look at our opening hand. Uh, this one is reasonable. We got uh, Seeker, we got some creatures to play, Searing Blaze, so in my opinion it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. And let's see, Mountain uh, generally, when you see the opening mountain pass, it's burn. That's the first thing I always think of. And alchemist, very much burn. All right, we definitely need to get make sure we get rid of the uh, alchemist right away. So we definitely sear and blaze that. I'm also going to start getting down some creatures because we need to make sure we close out the game as soon as possible. And we get the searing, uh, the seeker of the way down. Fortunately, he does have a searing blaze, so he's going to be able to start picking away our creatures. So it's a little unfortunate, but we didn't have anything uh, to chain together with the Seeker anyway to gain ourselves some life. Fortunately, drawing more lands isn't that great. We need to apply pressure and get rid of this Thermal Alchemist. So it's a little unfortunate currently, but we're just going to do what we can by getting in some damage and getting in as many creatures as we can. A little unfortunate with how many lands we've drawn, but not much we can do there. We're also very likely dead because he's been able to tap twice with Thermal Alchemist and he's just kind of going off with a bit of a nut draw for a burn and sure enough we are dead. That's what happens when there's an unchecked Alchemist on the field. So we're just going to quickly jump on over to game number two. Uh, we have a pretty good sideboard plan against burn, as most decks should. Uh, I'm going to take out all of the Glint Hawks. Uh, basically, I'm kind of going with a slightly lower on the artifact counts and the glint hawks aren't all that great in this matchup to be honest i don't want to be taking a ton of time just redrawing a lot of cards so i take out one vial and a bunch of glint hawks i'm also taking out the palace sentinels just to lower the curve although you can always leave them in because they don't really have a way of stealing it back from you if you want the extra card draw both ways are perfectly reasonable there but in this one i wanted to bring in the coalition honor guards they basically guarantee eat like a lightning bolt or more because uh, they, they require 4 damage, so I really like it for that. I'm also, of course, bringing the Lone Missionaries to gain life, Circle Protection Red, both Prismatic Strands, just a whole lot of protection effects. And hopefully that's enough to carry us through the Onslaught of Burn. Taking a look at our opening hand. A uh, great hand. We got the Lone Missionary to start ourselves off with some life gain, removal to get rid of any of those creatures that are going to threaten increasing the burn damage from all the spells he plays, and a Coalition Argard for when we eventually get around to turn 4 to just drop that and eat a bunch of burn. Very happy keeping this one. We'd like to draw some additional lands, but the way things have been going lately, we've been drawing very a lot of lands anyway, so we're not worried about that. Gonna go ahead and get down the Lone Missionary. If we get Searing Blaze, that's fine, whatever. Firebrand Archer, we've got that covered. Get that out of the way, and just get in for a bit of damage. Another one comes down, that's fine. We've got plenty of ways of getting rid of it. Can't let these things live. Oh, land perfect. This means we're going to be able to attack and sc skyfisher back our lone missionary. So basically, after that sequence of events, we basically won this game, being able to remove two of their creatures right off the bat and being able to cast two lone missionaries in a game. Uh, especially with being able to have a bit of clock and have uh, burn to go to their face if we need to speed up the game. Alchemist, we're of course not going to let that live. And we're going to continue getting in there. Windscarred Crag, a little extra life gain, and then that means next turn, if we want to, we can drop the Coalition Honor Guard. That seems pretty good to, to me. He's continuing to not do anything. That's fine. We're just going to get in for the damage. And going to drop the... Uh, had the option of dropping the Coalition Honor Guard there. Instead, I decided to go with the Skyfisher. Uh, the reason being, we want to try and maximize the amount of damage we're doing. Uh, of course, he doesn't want us to gain the additional life by replaying the Lone Missionary, so he ends up using a Bolt on it, but that means it's a Bolt at the Lone Missionary, not at our face. Opponent concedes because we've got 4 damage on board, he doesn't have a way of realistically beating us, and we are going to burn him out anyways, so... Managed to win Game 2. Going to go on to Game 3. Don't believe I made any additional changes. Ah, yes I did. I brought in... I brought back in one of the Palace Sentinels. I decided I'd like to have a little additional card draw, and I took out one of the Journeys. Uh, just because this version of Boros Monarch has a lot of additional removal, uh, I decided I'd rather have removal that also burns their face instead of just having a removal that could get stuck in her hand. And we're going to run it like that. Taking a look at our opening hand. Uh, perfectly reasonable keep. We're going to have some life gain. We got our draw with the 
uh, Prism into Skyfisher. We also have a Seeker of the Way that if we can ever connect with, that's great for us. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. Also got the one Palace Sentinel for eventually if we want to start drawing some additional cards. Boros Garrison is a nice thing to see. That means we're going to have all of the land we need online. And here comes the Firebrand Archer. Unfortunately, the one thing this hand is lacking is the ability to kill it right away, so hopefully that doesn't crush us right away. He is able to start removing our creatures, and that's why we didn't play the Seeker of the Way right away. We were afraid of a Searing Blaze. And thankfully, we were lucky enough to draw a removal to get rid of the Archer there. So we remove it, and now... Coalition Honor Guard is excellent because he just uh, put two Rift Bolts uh, suspended. This basically forces him to burn both unless he's willing to spend some other cards on it. So he ends up spending one Rift Bolt and a Searing Blaze without a land drop on it to remove it. So that basically just saved our life, the one Coalition Honor Guard. Drawing the Radiant Fountain means we get to draw some additional life and we drop the Seeker. Oh, it's speeding up a little bit too much. Drop the Seeker, hopefully hoping it'll stick so we can get it for some damage and draw gain some additional life. Unfortunately that didn't happen, but that's fine. Here it's, we're like fairly dicey. He's fairly low on cards, so we're just hoping that two cards off the top isn't enough to kill us. And here, since he didn't kill us there, basically we're just hoping that we can core Skyfisher, bounce back the Radiant Fountain, replay Radiant Fountain, and get into Palace Sentinels, hopefully drawing a, gaining a little bit of extra life and drawing some additional cards to gain us additional life and protection effects will be enough to get us there. So it's a pretty close one. Galvanic Blast means we can remove a creature, and that'll help us out. So we drop the Palace Sentinel, we drop the Core Skyfisher, getting back the Radiant Fountain and playing that. So now any two, three damage burn spells won't kill us, and Prismatic Strands is perfect. Now we just need to make sure we're always leaving up three mana to keep the Prismatic Strands open. And we're just going to continue to gain life whenever and wherever we can. Uh, this means we're protected from a three damage burn spell and a Fire Blast. Drawing additional lands, that's not going to help us at all, but by this point I'm feeling pretty comfortable since we have multiple protection effects. Uh, technically attacking with all creatures here is a little on the risky side because it, mean, it, it means we don't have a second activation of Prismatic Strands, but I want to also close out this game as fast as possible, so I'm attacking with multiple creatures. Uh, we're also playing all of our card draw because we want to try and get through all this, this massive land clump, but it uh, looks like we've made it through that. We're able to play the Radiant Fountain one last time, just gain some a bit, a bit more life. We're going to get the attack in, and then we're going to go for the Galvanic Blast to win the game. It was a little dicey there, and we did get rather low on life total a few times, but thankfully he didn't have the exact cards he needed on the one turn opening he had, and we were able to just squeak out a win, bringing us up to a 2-2 record. Hopefully the luck stays, and we can continue to draw well. Uh, well... Well enough, we're drawing fairly land-heavy hands lately, but that's alright. I will see you guys in round 5.